I spoke with New Republic writer Osito Wanevu about the future of the GOP. That conversation, that's next. Also, as a conservative host of this show, you just wrote a, a cover story. I just saw somebody literally yeah. just sent me this this morning, so I haven't gotten to read the full thing. And right. the GOP. Yeah. Um, maybe lay out the the argument there. So this is a piece that uh, I was inspired to write after coming across Stan Greenberg, a Democratic pollster's mm -hmm. book called R.I.P. GOP that he wrote late last year, and it's about this idea that as a consequence of natural demographic changes in the, in the United States, party. Uh, the country is becoming less white, people are liberalizing their opinions, all kinds of things. This would naturally lead to de decline in the uh, Republican, uh, Republican Party's viability as a political party. Well, you're, so that is predicated on the idea that the Republican Party is only appealable to white people. Exactly. Not, I think that, but that's as, I lay, as I lay out yeah. this article, I think there are a number of reasons why that belief, which I think is really, really strong amongst a lot of Democrats, is simply wrong. Uh, in the first place, this idea that simply as a consequence of people turning against the Republican Party or the demographics changing, that naturally leads to victories in presidential elections. I think we just saw in 2016, that's mm. not the case. Clinton right. wins by several million more votes than Trump in the popular vote, but as a consequence of the Electoral College, the way that power is geographically distributed in this country, Republicans can still win the presidency, they can still win the Senate, mm -hmm. uh, the Senate's gonna become harder and harder for Democrats to win over time. So what I'm laying out in this article is, if you believe, as I do, that the Republican Party has become a, a real threat to what we say our values are as a country, if you think and are troubled by the possibility of somebody like Trump emerging again from the Republican Party and you don't like what he's done for the country, uh, you cannot sit back and say to yourself, you know, as a consequence of demographics, as a consequence of Republicans just being uh, too bad, and, and too uh, appalling to the majority of the American people in terms of their policy positions, that naturally is going to let us win in the future. I think that if you really are troubled by the Republican Party... It's like that coalition of the ascendant exactly. inevitability and inevitability argument. In the article. I, I think that you have, to, you have to think about this political challenge differently. It's not just an electoral challenge, but it's a challenge of demonstrating to the American people that the Republican Party is something that cannot be abided. In American society. So has it occurred to you that perhaps that it's that exact attitude that yeah. makes it that so you accuse the GOP of being this power hungry thing? I've seen you advocate for packing courts right. online. I mean, has it occurred to you that maybe it's that attitude that makes people dig in and not want to vote for the Democratic Party? I mean, you're uh, literally That's proposing certainly. ending a GOP. And one of the things, I only got to read the introduction of your article, but you yeah. talk about with true disdain for people in Alabama who supported Roy Moore. Um, I have nothing but disgust for Roy Moore, but it's exactly this type of politics that mm -hmm. makes it so that somebody would support a Roy Moore in the first place. When you have a politics of existentialism, mm -hmm. and in your story, you're essentially talking about erasing GOP voters, and then you actually embrace a demographic argument mm -hmm. for why GOP voters themselves will be erased, embracing almost like a racialist narrative, you're essentially creating the conditions for the existentialism and the power grabs of which you're criticizing the GOP for and actually advocating for them yourself. Well, I'm not making a racialist argument because what I'm well, actually saying- Well, no, you're essentially saying, saying the population is being erased that only is conservative and that these bad people who support a Donald Trump or a Roy Moore mm -hmm. need to just be discarded into the dustbin of history. Well, I'm I mean, not saying you're, that. You're, I'm saying that- You're embracing really the most, the most extreme version of a Tucker Carlson replacement argument. I'm not at all. I find that deeply offensive. I'm saying exactly the opposite. I'm saying that in spite of Republican fears that they're being demographically challenged and that they're going to be removed from power as a consequence of the country's demographics changing. The Republican Party has a disproportionate structural advantage mm -hmm. in our country and in our democracy, just given the way that the Senate is structured. Through the Electoral College. The Senate and the Electoral College. Mm -hmm. We're reaching a point where 30 percent of the country is going to re choose 70 percent of the senators mm -hmm. by 2040, according to demographic figures from the University of Virginia. So all the people who were worried that immigration and all these other things mm. are going to oust Republicans from power, I don't think that's true at all. What I'm advocating for is a political system in which your vote counts just as much if you live in California or New York mm. as it does if you live in Alabama or in Kansas or in any other larger conservative state. That's not the country we live in now. That's not sure. the republic we have. If you're somebody who believes that your vote should count equally, everybody in this country should have equal political rights and an equal say in our democracy, the structure that we have now that is empowering the Republican Party is not that structure. So what, let's think about it this way. The, the reason that the system is in place in the first place is to empower some sort of minority voice. So you're saying right. that that minority voice of this 
country. Now you're asking for it to be erased simply because that minority vote I'm not, I'm might not be to the to be Well, I mean, an effective erasure of the Senate and of actual power in this country for some sort of George minority George W. Check. Bush won the popular vote in 2004. Yeah. It is not beyond the capacity of the Republican Party to make an argument to the majority of the American people that they should be in power. I don't disagree I with argue that so they should much. have to yeah. make that argument in order to win. And so you're and saying they they're not right making that argument. They're not. They don't have to make that mm -hmm. argument in order to win elections. Trump did not make that argument. Well, and I would say that re who, Republicans have been very effective at um, working the rules, changing and shaping who can vote course. and who can't in well, a way that's been more. I mean, look, I, I'm critical of the Democratic Party on this, that they haven't been enough focused on power. Instead, they're always just listen, making excuses for why they can't you, win. But I'm themselves. saying, I mean, if you're going to attack somebody for trying to you know, say, play the system and then also in the same breath basically talk about packing the court, I think you should understand the existentialism that a lot of GOP voters are going to well, feel, especially embracing an immigration agenda, which is going to legalize millions of people, possibly in the states, actually almost entirely in the states, right. that you're talking about to support in a majoritarian politics. You don't understand how people can maybe look at that a little bit cynically and say, you're the actual one working the system and the power grab in order to erase the voice of millions of Americans? All I know that yeah. is for 20 years, at least, if you go to places like CPAC, if you listen to Republican politicians talk about the Democratic Party and talk about liberals, mm -hmm. what they say is not, we should just defeat the Democratic Party in the next election. What Newt Gingrich comes in in the 90s and starts saying is that the Democratic Party is a threat to American values, that the continuation of the Democratic Party as a political entity is something that's going to break this country apart. Now people say, well, it's going to destroy Western civilization if we allow the values of liberalism, even if the majority of the country happens to agree with. Uh, our policies. We now have a country that's liberalizing on the immigration issue because Donald Trump has been so extreme. You look at Gallup polling, the fastest growing constituency in this country on the issue of immigration is people who think immigration should be increased, mm -hmm. right? If you but have that's a not the majoritarian party, position, by the way. No, it's not the majority yeah. position. And the majority but it's position, larger, but it's, it's actually the mo single most important issue in the general It's certainly election. a larger constituency than the people who, like Donald Trump, believe that immigration is a terrible crisis in this country and we should start right. throwing people out. That is a nowhere. That is, that is not the opinion of most people. Most people hate at the wall. Most people don't like child separation. But my point is, Republicans consistently make arguments that beyond the politics of elections and beyond uh, our contests every two to four years. We are engaged in a moral struggle against the left. But that's what you're saying. That's I'm the saying, entire, I'm saying, I'm that's saying, the whole predicate of And I'm saying piece. that they're right. I'm saying they're right. Yeah. I'm saying that we should no longer, as a party, as a movement, fight this game where we are saying that all that's at stake right now is mm -hmm. an election. And if we just win a majority and do what we can, you know, we'll, we'll mm -hmm. work with Republicans here and there, and then we're going to get to the kind of country we want. Republicans have always been engaged in something else. And I think it's time for Democrats, liberals, to take that fight seriously. You know, they're yelling at me in my ear because we're going for too long. You and I need to sit down, possibly on a podcast, and we'll sure. shake this out. So consider that an invitation. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for coming. Great to have Thanks you. I really appreciate it.